Welcome ladies and gentlemen, in this veteran Mel Samarina guide we will go through each stage, explain the boss fights and also some of the difficult waves before the boss. This guide is also very beginner friendly because I will showcase the run with a setup where I only had 300 champion points activated. I do have a written guide on the website which is like 10 pages long and very detailed. So if you're more the reading guy, link in the description below. I am also going to upload full runs with commentary on a lot of different specs. So make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you always get notified when I upload new content. Here you can see the build. It's a very beginner friendly setup. You can also find the build on the website. I do only have 300 champion points activated. That way we actually can see mechanics because if we have maxed out champion points things will die before something actually happens and that's obviously not very helpful. And please remember you can do this on any type of character. The guide is here that you understand the mechanics. Once you understand the mechanics you will have no problem actually clearing the veteran maelstrom arena. In terms of gear, I usually recommend people getting a golded out weapon and maybe purple gear. That's more than enough. The golden rule of the Maelstrom Arena, use sigils. They are so overpowered, it will make the Maelstrom Arena so much easier. Especially activating the shield sigil, which will reflect all ranged attacks. So you barely take any damage. And the ox sigil, which will increase your damage by a lot. The arena is easier for Magicka characters because you can simply activate your shield and enemies can't touch your health. On stamina characters you need to actively dodge roll heavy attacks and keep your healing up. Let's start with explaining the mechanics. In the first stage let's check out the boss because the waves before are not very hard. As you can see the first thing I do is, once the boss spawns, I activate the Oxy Chill to get that insane damage boost. And if you want, you could also pick the Shield Chill. Drop your ultimate, all your AoE effects, focus the boss. A net will spawn, it will die in your AoE effect. If not, then f quickly focus it so it actually dies. The boss will teleport away after a while, rinse and repeat. That's really pretty much it. Make sure to keep moving around because there's a circle following you and each time the boss actually teleports one more ad will spawn so the longer the fight goes on the more difficult it gets. If you fail to kill an ad he will absorb them and regain some health. A few people might be wondering why it shows 825 CP above my health. That's just my max champion point rank that I have at the moment. Like I mentioned before, I only have 300 champion points activated throughout the whole run. The stage 2 has a few important mechanics. The blades that are going around apply a bleed on you if you get hit by it. And if you get hit by several blades, the bleed stacks, dealing more and more damage. You can see the levers around the edge of the arena. When you activate one of these, the blades stop. If you don't get hit by a blade for 10 seconds, all the bleeds on you will be gone. This is more a problem for stamina characters because you need to keep your heals up. On magical setups you usually can just reactivate your shield to really dampen all the damage. In the middle of the arena don't step on the plate because it's like electrified and you will get a lot of damage. The boss fight three centurions will spawn after each other. You always need to focus the one that does not have a shield. Because after you did certain amount of damage, he will cover down, get shielded and then you can't damage him anymore. It means you need to focus the next one, you need to keep doing this till they are dead. Please keep in mind the blades are still going around that apply the bleed. The bosses have a few very hard hitting abilities so make sure to block, dodge roll or shield them. And if you activate the green lever. The boss will also go to the middle and heal up a little bit, so please keep that in mind. And this boss fight can really take a while, so you really need to be aware of the blades and the bleed damage. Don't forget that. 
in stage three memorize the sigils i highly recommend using them here because sometimes there can be a lot of damage and the sigils make it a lot easier save your ultimates for the big monsters that way they die fairly fast avoid the waters if you have to pick the sigil do it real fast and then go back in because sometimes the water gets electrified stranglers spawn throughout the arena kill them if you don't kill them they will snare you like crazy very important the wave before a last boss the queen's advisor more will spawn and it can stun or pull you towards herself so make sure to be aware of that other than that she also deals quite a bit of damage so make sure to be shielded or have heals active the boss in this stage is a Lamia. She hits really freaking hard, so be careful. She has a frontal AoE cone that will stun you and moths will spawn. So you have the option to just burn her down instantly or wait till the first wave of mobs spawn. Get the shield and the oxy chill and then drop your ultimate and all the, the AoE abilities on her and just focus the boss till she's dead and keep moving around her so she has to reposition herself so she can't always damage you just instantly she also drops a healing circle from time to time you can either just ignore it or move the boss away from it and as you can see as long as you keep your shield up you're safe on stamina it's a little bit more difficult obviously Stage 4 has these small robots that are very annoying, they go towards the middle, shield up and then shoot like shock AOE towards you. If you kill them before they can shield up, they really don't have a lot of health, so they die really fast. And just in general, there is quite a lot of monsters. The melee monsters will use wrecking blow on you, so you might get stunned quite often unless blocked. And the ranged mobs just deal overall a lot of damage, so make sure to keep your defensive abilities up all the time boss fight make sure to have your ultimate ready activate the oxygen shield so you really get that insane burst damage at the start of the fight then a green circle will appear below the boss stand in there because that's your safe zone the boss can't hit you in there after a while he will turn into a stationary boss and shoot flames and then you need to go out because now the green zone goes away and you will start shooting flames around huge flame aoe so make sure to kite them like walk around so you don't get hit by them to deal a lot of damage and now is also the time where you can pick the shield sigil once that phase is over the green circle will appear again stand below the boss and damage him till he's dead if you have really low damage, I actually recommend killing the adds that spawn, otherwise it just might be too much pressure at some point. Now it gets interesting. People love stage 5. There is ice water. If you stand in the ice water, you will get a lot of incoming damage, so always make sure to stay on the frozen ice. Very important, like on the snow fields or whatever you want to call them. Trolls will spawn from time to time and try to destroy these safe zones. So you need to make sure to interrupt the troll that stuns him or just kill him faster than he can smash the platform. The big troubles usually start when the big mobs start to spawn. What I do is I save my ultimate for the first wave and then if there is a second wave of big mobs I activate sit chills. And that way it's actually fairly easy. So you just need to learn how to time that properly. The same thing for when the two giants spawn and they deal a lot of damage. So I just pop the shield sit chill and you're not going to die if you have that active. And that makes the fight just so much easier. Now here I was actually lucky because the troll that smashes the platform went straight to the one I was on. Sometimes it can be that he actually goes somewhere else, so you really need to keep an eye on that. Before we continue, please make sure to subscribe and hit the juicy like button. It helps my channel a lot. Thank you very much. Boss fight stage 5. So here it gets interesting. A lot of people don't know, but this boss 
mechanics are health based so if you don't push the boss into the next phase you actually have enough time to kill the ads that spawn but if you just focus the boss more and more ads will spawn you need all three platforms for this boss fight so i always start with this one here then i go to the right side and then the one on the left and why is that because the one on the left side on the far back left has the shield and the oxygen shield and we want that during the last phase of the boss so if a troll kills one of the safe zones you're basically dead so you really need to focus on the trolls that spawn so they don't destroy the platform once the boss is pushed to 75 percent health she will smash the first platform that means you need to go to the next one mobs will spawn again so just focus the mobs try to not damage the boss too much because at 45 percent the boss will smash the platform again now you go to the last platform activate the shield and the oxygen chill and then you drop your ultimate and all your damage you have on the boss and hopefully he will die that is usually the most efficient tactic but you need to make sure to have your ultimate ready because it adds so much extra damage stage six a few of the mechanics there is a lot of pillars around that have spider webs around them if you bring a horror close to it and it dies it will actually free the pillar completely or you can kill a horror further away he will drop some sort of like mud ball and you can throw it but be careful shock aoe is flying around often so you don't want to get locked into one place too often if you free all pillars the mobs will get stunned for quite a long time now another thing why this is important is if you have no pillar that like is free from time to time small spiders will spawn you will hear it by that that weird sound that will pop up and they like you need to get to a gl to the pillar that glows goldish if you don't do that these small spiders will 100 percent kill you they do so much damage so the only way to get rid of them is by going to a pillar that glows goldish to so they get away because they're shy of light or something like that usually towards the end of the wave you have these flash atronachs that spawn make sure to kite them or run around them so they don't manage to hit you all the time so they deal a lot of damage so the wave before the boss you have a lot of preparation to do two lurchers spawn make sure to kill one of them and leave the other one alive so you can actually keep light attacking him to gain ultimate so you have your ultimate for the boss fight and same thing goes for the horrors free all the pillars except one so when you go into the boss fight you only have one pillar that is not wept because then after a certain while at like 60 50 percent of the boss you free the last pillar and the boss gets stunned and that will give you a huge advantage if this boss is alive for too long he will one shot you at some point like there is no way around that so you really need to make sure to have enough single target and aoe damage and time your sigils correctly and drop your ultimate at the right moment focus the boss take the shield sigil after a while like 10 15 seconds that way the boss attacks will get reflected and you take no damage there is also a spider that will actually try to web your pillars again make sure to keep an eye out for these and kill it if there is one at 50 percent a lurcher will spawn and that's basically where you should drop the the pillar the last one so it gets freed and then the boss and all the mobs get stunned activate the oxygen chill drop your ultimate and everything you have on the boss and he should die before stage seven the most cancerous stage for most people there is some sort of flowers on the ground if you get too close to them they will explode and place a huge damage over time effect on you 
that you need to cleanse in these green platforms. Now you only have two cleansable platforms per wave, keep that in mind. So make sure if you have the dot on you, you will not notice it fast because it deals so much damage. Keep spamming your shield or keep your heals up. Maybe even slot the barrier if you don't have some sort of shield that can be very helpful in this stage. I recommend always focusing the archers, their light attacks deal so much damage, it's completely nuts. Now you can completely negate that damage by picking up the shield sigil, the damage will get reflected to the enemy and they might actually kill themselves. On the outer platforms a caster will appear and you need to kill him because he will keep spawning and exploding the flowers and kind of create a minefield. So you really need to kill him as fast as possible. There's two other tricky situations where two archers and a Vamasu spawn, use shield sigil and then you have three archers that spawn at the same time in a later wave. Also make sure to activate the shield sigil, that way you basically can negate most damage. Stage 7 boss, I recommend using the ox sigil at the start if you want that juicy damage boost. Drop your ultimate and everything you have right when the boss spawns because that basically gives you the most burst damage flowers and these casters that make these minefields will keep spawning throughout the fight so you need to be aware of that as well and the boss will stun you place a bleed on you the most important mechanic of the boss fight two mages will spawn and you need to kill one of the mages once one is dead you need to go to the second one and stand in its shock aoe dome because the boss will start screaming and if you're outside of that shock field from that enemy mob you're one shot you're dead so your only protection is that mage's shock field if you kill both mages you're dead basically now this can be difficult if you have sets on like Groftar or just Valley Dref and then you accidentally kill it that will make you wipe. If you have enough damage the boss will be dead quite fast otherwise you need to repeat this process over and over again. Stage 7 towards the end of each wave a lurcher will spawn they deal an insane amount of damage and they're immortal till you actually destroy the blue pillar that is whole. Once that is gone, they will get stunned and are damageable. The last two stages have a lot of fire damage, so if you're a vampire, then I might recommend getting back to stage one so you don't take any extra fire damage or just like don't use it at all in Maelstrom Arena. Towards the end there is usually one wave that really causes issues because there is two healers and two fire mages that create these circles. If they do these circles you, you should make sure to interrupt them because they deal so much damage. You also have the option to pick up sigils again, don't forget that, that will make it a lot easier. After that you have two melee mobs that will spawn that will use wrecking blow on you but they usually don't cause that much of a trouble. The real issue comes afterwards. The real trouble comes after you kill these two mobs. A mini boss will spawn with two healers. You want to make sure to destroy the, the stone pillar so the boss gets stunned. That way you have time to kill both healers. Once these are dead I usually recommend picking up the shield sigil as fast as possible if you still have it because it really helps mitigate a lot of damage. If you don't have it anymore make sure to kite the boss around. He's very slow but deals a lot of damage so use that to your advantage. The boss fight of stage 8 is almost easier than that mini boss we just killed. Basically what happens you need to kill all three pillars once they are broken the boss will get stunned and that's when you can damage him. Now during these phases a fire caster can show up that you really want to kill and flame Atronarchs that show up. So you need to make sure that you have as much damage as possible once you stun the boss and then just jam out everything. 
after a while the these pillars will get whole again so same thing you need to break them for the boss to get stunned ads might spawn so make sure to kill the ads or stay close to them so you can interrupt them and usually two or three waves are enough to kill the boss he's very slow he has a fire blast attack but as long as you're not fighting him in like close up he can't really deal that much damage to you The last stage, the pain is almost over. In stage 9, the crematorial guards usually cause a lot of pain. So the trick with these is when they spit fire, run around them, circle them. So you don't get all of the damage. That's the easiest way to really make them kind of a choke. Make sure to avoid the white ghosts. They deal damage to you and snare you on top. And then there is also golden ghosts you need to pick them up if you pick up three golden ghosts you will get the synergy that you can activate and stun all the mobs in the area i would usually wait to use this till you have like either one of the creme guards or just a lot of mobs in one spawn Round 5 is usually where people also have issues. First you have to kill a small mob and the Kremgar and after that a big boy Titan will spawn. What I usually do is I save my ultimate. The moment he spawns I activate the damage sigil. I drop the ultimate and all my AoE and usually it's enough damage to actually kill him. Here I was lucky because I also had 3 of the ghosts so I could actually stun him. But even if you can stun him, if you keep your shields or your heals up, he should not kill you. The last boss fight starts in the middle. Activate one of the sit shields, the, the healing one, if you want. It helps a lot. Now damage the boss. You need to get him to like 69% for him to go up. So try to constantly damage him. Save your ultimate for when the crematorial guard spawns, because that dude usually hits fairly hard. And you need to keep an eye on the main boss because if he does his heavy attack with the big skull you need to dodge all or block it if you don't it will deal a lot of damage and stun you and you will probably die once the boss goes up make sure to kill the rest of the mobs and now you need to bring the clan fear to the glowing platform if you kill him close to it you can go upstairs and here you need to kill three crystals. Focus on the first one. Keep an eye on the boss because he keeps throwing these skulls that will knock you off the platform. If you fall down, a, another crematorial guard will spawn and you have to repeat the process. If the boss is casting, go behind the big stone wall. If you're not behind it, you will get knocked off as well. Now again, always keep the focus on the boss. The build is fairly simple here, just heavy attack, keep the dots on the crystal and they will die. You actually can go down if you want, because there is also a small dot that is placed on you and the longer you're upstairs, the more damage it does. And if you go downstairs, the damage will reset. But again, you have to fight another Krem guard downstairs. So now I kill the last crystal. Always dodge roll the schools or block them also works, but we have 15k stamina, so it's more than enough. Once we're downstairs, I usually pick up the ox and the shield seat shield, so I really just can drop everything I have on the boss as fast as possible. Make sure to pick up the ghosts, the gold ones, because after a while, if you're too slow, you can stun the boss. But you see, he, he melts. If you're too slow, the mobs in the middle will summon a huge skeleton. So you could technically kill it, but usually I would just recommend picking the shield sigil and the ox and then just burn the boss down. I only have 300 champion points activated, so my damage is not really insane. Like if you have more champion points, you can burn this boss way faster.
ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions you can either ask in our community discord or on twitch.tv slash alcasthq or check out the written guide on my website which is very detailed has pictures and really explains every single phase builds and so on always up to date on the website there's also maelstrom gameplay that you can check out there's just all the content my main focus is always on the website if you want to watch a few more videos check out these right here make sure to not forget to subscribe and hit that juicy like button thanks for watching and see you soon